Hey everyone, my name is Andre and welcome back to another video. Today we will talk about how to start learning WordPress theme development. We will talk about what you need to learn before starting to learn WordPress theme development, but we will also talk about what pieces of knowledge about WordPress theme development you should learn so you can say that you know how to de develop a WordPress theme. So without any further ado, let's see what you need to know. Firstly, let's see what you need to know before starting to learn WordPress theme development and that is you need to have nailed the basics nailed down and that is at least HTML and CSS and maybe even a little bit of JavaScript or at least know how to work with jQuery. You don't have to be like a JavaScript ninja but you should know at least how to work with jQuery and of course you need to know a little bit at least of PHP. You don't need to have a guru level knowledge of all these technologies. You don't need to be a world class expert in HTML, but you will definitely work a whole lot faster if you don't have to Google every single time you need to run, to run a PHP loop or change the background color in CSS. Anyway, the thing I'm trying to say here is that you don't need to be an expert in the other technologies before starting to learn WordPress theme development, but you do need to have the basics down. For the more advanced practices, uh, for the more advanced concepts, you can always pick the knowledge app on the fly when you need it. Before we go into how to start learning theme development, I will cover a, a few nice to haves, if I can say that so. You should have a bit of experience with a CSS processor like SAS or LESS. Personally, I use SAS. And also you will want to know how a test runner or compiler like Grunt or Gulp works. Personally, I use Gulp in my workflow. When I first started WordPress team development, I didn't know any of this, but as I've picked them up, I now can't imagine working without them. As I've said, th these are not a must in the beginning, but as you start gaining experience, you will need to use those tools just to make your whole life easier. Okay, with the basic stuff out of the way, let's go to the juicy part right now. How to start learning WordPress theme development. The first thing you need to learn for WordPress theme development is how to turn the like button blue for the YouTube algorithm. It only takes a click or a gentle tap on the like button. It will help you, it will help the YouTube algorithm and it will help this video reach more viewers. Okay, the actual first thing you need to know is how to make a bare bones simple, extremely that simple theme. And for that, you only need two files. The first one is a style.css. The second one, it's an index.php. Of course, you won't be building themes only with these two files, but in order to make a, the most simple theme ever, you only need these, those two files. And after you have created the first two files in your WordPress team, you will need to learn about the team hierarchy. Yeah, you will need to get the hang on how the template hierarchy works in WordPress. Basically that is what files or what template files are loaded onto pages uh, for whatever pages or for whatever conditions they need to be met. Those are files like frontpage.php, index.php, front, uh, home.php, author.php, taxonomy.php, and so on and so forth. Also, when we are at this subject, we should talk about partial files. Those are more, more like templates that you can plug into the other pages, like header.php and footer.php. Also, uh, on the screen now, I will display an image that you will have to dream about. You will have to learn. You don't have to learn it from the inside out. Uh, but you will refer to it a lot when you're starting to learn WordPress theme development. This image shows you how the template hierarchy works in WordPress. For example, let's say I want to add some custom design and some custom functionality to my contact page. And I would like to add a ton of functionality that I can only do with custom code. So I will have to create another file in my theme folder called page-contact.php. The actual page template is page-slug, the slug of the page, .php. Okay, the WordPress theme and template hierarchy is a bit of a comp more complex topic and we will talk about it on large in another video. 
So after you have created all those files, you will need to find a way to pull in the content that you have created in the WordPress CMS editor. And here's where the loop comes into play. Basically, it's just a while loop in PHP. It's nothing too special except the part that is bringing content into your website. In its most basic form, it looks something like this. And from this loop, this simple loop, you can build a more complex logic when it comes to displaying content. Okay, after you have wrapped your hand around how the WordPress template hierarchy works, the, the loop in WordPress, you need to start learning how custom post types works. All the content in WordPress exists under the form of a post type. Even the pages in WordPress are a custom post type, even the menus or, and, or the attachments. The most important thing is that the custom post types allows us to build custom functionality into the website. And also you can check somewhere around here for a video I've made about custom post type when I show you how to create one and how to use one. Okay, another important file and actually very important file, extremely important file is the function.php. Basically, this is the file that will add custom functionality to your WordPress website from enqueuing the CSS style sheets and the J JavaScript scripts to creating custom post types to adding me menus, adding widgets and an insanely amount of custom stuff. All it's done in the, in the function.php file. This is the file that will give your team superpowers. So when you will be adding custom functionality to your team, this is the file you will spend the most of your time on. Okay, now we've come to the more advanced concepts about WordPress team development and the next thing that you should learn are actions and filter hooks. And those two things are something that you not only need for WordPress team development, but also for plugin development. You will need to understand the hook architecture that WordPress is using. The hooks lets you expand on the WordPress core even if you don't know how it works under the hood. And I can say there are two stages on understanding how hooks work. The first one is using the WordPress hooks, using the hooks at the action and filter hooks that WordPress gives us to work with to hook, basically to hook into WordPress. And the second stage is when you create your own hooks that will make your team or even plugin be more extendable in the future. We won't go so in depth with this topic now, we will cover them in another video. The next on the list are the WordPress conditional tags. If you have a basic knowledge of programming, you will know what an if statement is. And a conditional tag is basically an if statement that needs to be wrapped in another if statement. Wait, wait, what, what did I just say? <laughs> Never mind, let me show you. For example, you, we may want to check if we are on the front page. So the conditional tag for that is this one is underscore front underscore page. The, this function will return a true or false value. And based on that value, we can do something or we can do something else. That's why this function needs to be wrapped in another if statement. WordPress offers a lot of conditional tags that you will want to use and you will need to use when you are doing team development work. Okay, so the last thing on our list today is the WordPress team structure. You will need to develop a good understanding on how to organize your code into files and folders. This is more of a quality of life and work organizing issue. If you have all your files thrown together in your team folder, soon you will have to hire Sherlock Holmes to find a code snippet that you need to work on. And that's why you need to have an organized team structure to make your life a whole lot easier. And believe me, I have made teams with a horror story of a team structure. Okay, you don't need a specific folder structure. There's no such thing as a perfect folder structure. You will need one that will help you keep your code clean and your files organized. For starters, you can have a look at other teams, how they organize their code. Some good examples are the themes that WordPress gives us every year, the 2021, 2020 themes. Also, you can have a look at the folder structures starter themes like underscores or Sage are using. Okay. This was all for today. This has been a small roadmap of the things that you need to learn in order to develop, in order to be able to develop WordPress teams. <coughs> in the near future, 
I know a lot of you, I know a lot of you requested to make a team development. I know a lot of you requested to make team development tutorials or even more in depth WordPress tutorials, and I will make them. A WordPress team development crash course is on the line, so if you are not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be subscribed when more videos like this one will be available. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week.